While the majority of Republican voters are still ride or die with Donald Trump, some voters in key states seem to have gotten off the Trump train, specifically independents. As Newsweek reports, despite national polls showing that the indictments have had little impact on his support among GOP voters, because of course, apparently Republican voters seem to enjoy criminals. Uh, hey, I, 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 that's just what that's just what the, the facts are. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, signs have begun to emerge that among independents, uh, his support among independents is dropping. Reuters uh, spoke to 15 voters in Arizona. I know it's a small sample size, but again, it's getting a feel for some of the voters in Arizona who previously supported Trump and found a little bit of pushback against his 2024 campaign. Here's some quotes here. Uh, Mark Clark, a 77-year-old Arizonan who voted for Trump in 2016, told the outlet, quote, he's delusional. Wow, it gets better. Quote, he's still saying the 2020 election was fraudulent. In Georgia, he was definitely trying to gain votes he didn't have. That's an illegal process. Absolutely, I support the Georgia indictment. The justice system should play out, and I don't think he should be pardoned. So, look, uh, already he's saying, yeah, I think the guy is absolutely guilty uh, and should not be pardoned. I just got to say, based Mark, Mark Clark, he's got it. Nailed it. He also added that he will never support Trump again. In fact, among the 15 independents surveyed for the report, only one said, eh, you know what? I don't care about the indictments. Uh, I mean, I do care, but I'll still support Trump. Oh, well, great. Uh, now, another person uh, quoted in the article here from Newsweek is Susan Aitken, a 71-year-old who also voted for Donald Trump in 2016, saying, quote, I'm glad he's been indicted. Wow. <laughs> um, in fact, he said he was already talking about overturning the election even before he lost, she said. Anybody else would be in jail by now. Also true. And by the way, that is the two-tiered justice system at work. So what's funny is in this case is that uh, Republicans really think that they've stumbled onto something here when they talk about the two-tiered justice system. Did you know that there are two different standards of justice for people in this country? I didn't know that. Uh, what a, oh my God, I can't believe it. I just noticed this. Oh, really? You just noticed? Really? Uh, this is something we've been uh, talking about a long time on the left. In fact, that's actually part of the definition of what woke is. Being aware of the systemic injustices. Now, the other part, of course, that they miss is that the, it's systemic injustices against black people uh, that have been, you know, again, part of the system for a very, very long time. They seem to have completely ignored that part. Cherry picked it right out. Uh, but did notice that there does seem to be uh, some systemic injustices here. But, he, but they think it's at people like Trump and themselves, which are, by the way, two completely different types of people. <laughs> I, I, again, of course, Republicans only seem to understand, you know, partly understand the concept here of a two-tier justice system. They think that Donald Trump getting indicted for alleged criminal behavior, that's what's the real unfairness. Oh, that's the two-tier justice system. I can't believe somebody rich and powerful would ever get in trouble. Well, I mean, they're partly right. I can't believe that uh, somebody you you know who's rich and powerful would also get in trouble too. But here we are, because generally, those are not the people that tend to get in trouble. But they think, no, 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 he's not in trouble. He's in trouble because he's a conservative. No, Donald Trump, Donald Trump's not even a conservative. He he's a he's a, he's basically a grifter and a, a con artist and a populist. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And by the way, he's only populist in that he will say populist things in order to get something that he wants. Doesn't mean he's actually for populist policy. And so, again, he's not a conservative. In fact, conservatives have traditionally held a lot of power in our government. That's why banks and corporations have been deregulated uh, over the decades, why wages have continued to be stagnant, corporate profits have exploded productivity way, way up. And again, worker wages way, way down. Why you have healthcare and prescription drugs that are absolutely unaffordable. That's the, the doing of conservatives. That's the doing of, you know, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, Donald Trump. 
And yes, also you can add some Democrats in there that have embraced co pro corporate policies as well, like Bill Clinton. They have allowed the donors to run roughshod over all of us. That, by the way, is a real issue here uh, when it comes to our political system being so incredibly broken and slanted towards rich people like Donald Trump and generally why they tend not to get in trouble. Again, Trump is no different. He has signed the, the biggest corporate tax cuts we have ever seen in this country. Uh, and at the end of the day, the average MAGA person, your life didn't get better. But rich people, they may not like bandits. That's the, that's the truth of Donald Trump's only achievement here, serving wealthy people and serving himself. Because, of course, he saved millions of dollars on his taxes. To think that he is some sort of a victim of the two-tiered system of justice is laughable. Everything that he had chose to do, or I should say everything he accused he's accused of doing, he chose to do it. And this is all self-inflicted. And he did it because he thought he could get away with it because it traditionally had. And so it was pretty much, you know, every other incredibly wealthy white person. And in fact, the rule here is you can get away with screwing over average people. Okay. You know, coming in and, and, and buying up companies and then like loading them up with massive amounts of debt leading to the destruction of the company and mainly the destruction of every person's job who work there, destroying lives, livelihoods, entire towns. You can get away with that in this country. You can get away with that. But generally, the only rule for rich people is don't go after other rich people. Well, Donald Trump apparently has seemed to have made life harder for the Republican Party, the Republican Party officials, because they're losing, and therefore, oh no, here comes a resurgent populist left to counter that narrative which is not good news for the rich, okay? Now, that said, getting back to how these indictments could impact Trump's election, re re I don't even know uh, what to call it at this point. His campaign, let's go with that. Uh, Reuters noted in a July poll that it conducted with Ipsos, and it found that, over, uh, that around 37% of independent voters were less likely to vote for Trump as a result of his criminal indictments while only 8% said that they were more likely to support him. So 37 versus eight, that's disastrous. Independents, of course, are a gigantic block of voters. Uh, and a morning consult poll released earlier in August also found that around a fifth of GOP voters supported the charges against Trump. Now that's, again, not very much. It's about 20%. Still, it's starting to, like his support's starting to crack. There, there are some cracks forming here. Uh, and I think it's more significant when you're talking about independent voters. Now, um, in a more recent poll from P uh, Politico and Ipsos, about one third of respondents from across the political spectrum said that a conviction on federal charges would make them less likely to back Trump in, in 2024, which included around one third of respondents who identified as independents. So about 33 uh, percent. And according to a Navigator poll published on Friday, over 60% of voters believe Donald Trump has committed a crime and 67% of independents said he committed a crime. So I, again, that, that is two thirds of independents say, oh yeah, this guy definitely is criminal. And 42% believe that he will be convicted of any of the crimes of which he's been accused of. So at the end of the day, these are, these are kind of the polls that matter. <laughs> more so than Biden versus Trump, the hypotheticals uh, as of yet. Um, but it does show you that while Republican voters are obviously very pro-Trump and we expect them to be, there doesn't seem to be enough of them for him to win election, uh, an election alone. Now, the Republican Party knows this, but they themselves, look, it, you can just look at the primary field, right? Donald Trump skipped the debate uh, and, and the big headline is, oh, you, he, he's lost a little bit of support, but is still miles ahead of the rest of the Republican field. Now, the Republicans know this. They see this, you know, that, yes, you have that you have that Trump train that is uh, probably going to run right through the Republican primary. And they know this. The officials are worried about this because they know at the end of it, 
if they lose independence or continue to lose independence at, at this at this amount, especially if there are criminal convictions, that Trump train is going to go right off track and it's going to take the rest of the Republican Party with it. Whether or not they want to be on the train, they are tied to it as a party and uh, they don't, they desperately don't want that to happen. Uh, and so while the party apparatus themselves can't stop Trump, apparently this shows independence, they can, and they just might.